Before I get started, if I could have a prayer. Oh, Father God, it's because of you that we are here, because of your mercies that we are not consumed. We ask you for forgiveness this morning for staying outside your boundaries, if we have. We thank you for your law that gets our attention and points us back to getting back on track. We praise you. We come to worship and sing songs to your glory. May your will be done. May we gather a blessing and be a blessing this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Look at all these beautiful places. It's nice to see you smile. And I hope you're hope when you sing the songs this morning that you're you see the Lord and all this stuff and you get a picture of his glory. So I want to see all those faces smile when we sing the songs to him this morning. First uh, part of business we want to do is the member transfers. Uh, to the Loveland from the uh, Minnetucket. Minnesota Church, and that's Carol and Justin Lyons to the Loveland SDA Church. This is the second reading. So could they stand up, please, for those of that weren't here last week? Okay, so do we have a motion? All the <laughs> second? <laughs> you caught me off guard on that one, brother. We had a second? <laughs> All those in favor? Okay, any opposed? Better not be. All righty. Also, there was a little piece of paper here, orange one, that uh, the second reading also for positions that are the recommendations that have been filled here that we're hoping to fill. Uh, the church board would like to recommend the following people for the following uh, open positions uh, for the current term, which ends December 31st, 2024. Assistant Treasurer, uh, Caroline Clegg, Children's Story, uh, Julie Hawker, Children's Story Lead, Jen Grabe, and uh, Personal Ministries Director, Justin Lyons. So do I have a motion? motion. This was second. Second reading. It says on here, I hope. I hope. Okay. Second reading. So we had a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Perfect. Okay. As normal... The congregational prayer will happen afterwards, and, and I have to, you know, I praise you guys. You guys are doing such a wonderful job with the respect and the, the understanding that uh, for those that, that want to sit quietly and, and pray to the Lord, and um, we also, if you want to stand out in the, in the lobby, and, and, you know, I, I don't want to discourage any fellowship, because I love the fellowship too, as I've said, so uh, feel free to do that. Um, let's just remember to be respectful for those that, that sit quietly and, and uh, are praising and praying to the Lord. And thank you. You guys have been doing excellent. I appreciate that. Uh, women's study group Tuesday, 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. All ladies are welcome to join. Prayer meeting is Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Joe would like to put a parenthesis on that. He's getting lonely. He wants some attendance. Let's, uh, if, if you're wanting a good message, they do a Bible study still, right? You guys do a little Bible study and then uh, uh, prayer. Pray for you guys always. I hope you're ready for this. Those who are waiting for the second coming of Christ will be found in the prayer meeting. Okay. Um, do want to remind you that the ordinance of humility and communion is next Sabbath, March 30th. Please uh, uh, spend the time ne this next week to prepare your hearts, please. Um, get ready for that as we have that humil humility and divine service. Uh, Carl wants to speak a little bit about the MindFit program that's coming up. I'm assuming by now you may have heard something about this thing called MindFit. 
If you haven't, uh, it's a four-part series going to start in uh, April 4, and it'll run all the way to April 7, every night at 7 p.m. It's a new series that the Voice of Prophecy has put together, and it brings awareness about the uh, mental wellness kind of a crisis that's going on around here. So it's a great time to talk to your neighbors, to talk to your friends, talk to your enemies, for goodness sake, and invite them as well. Tell them that this is a great, this is, it's a, you know, for your enemies, tell them, hey, it's, I got a program for you about not to hell this. <laughs> it says, I'll be there with you, so. No, um, so there's two parts. There's things you can, you can do, you can be part of it. You got a set of cards here. On the back says, Lord, I am praying for an opportunity, opportunity to invite these people and it's got some blank, li blank lines for you to write down their names. Write down the names that you would like to see there outside of the church. Friends, enemies, family, whoever. And then ask God to give you the courage to invite them. There's also another set of cards. This is the invitation card. Talks in the back, talks a little bit about what the event is about. Um... Gives our address, even gives a web page so they can register, a QR code, so they can learn more, watch the trailer if they want to. And uh, it's great to get, this one is great to hand out if those of you in businesses, this is an excellent place to put in, card to put out on your counters or whatever you can. So, and you yourself show up. Believe it or not, you are part of the evangelism process by you showing up and welcoming people here so they, they feel um, loved as well. That is also part of the process. So thank you, and we'll see you here. We were supposed to get 20 young people to help us pass out door hangers about this on the people's doors. And so Carl, he uh, invested uh, and bought 1,000 door hangers. But those young people came at the same time that the snow came down, and they weren't from this part of the country, so they didn't come dressed to go out in the snow weather. So I didn't get able to take them door to door. So I'm needing some volunteers for tomorrow to go door to door to pass out those. We want to cover all the homes close to around the church. And all you have to do is just put them on the door. You don't got to talk to anybody. But if you do, I'll tell you what to say. But the thing is, so I need volunteers uh, to go with me tomorrow morning, say around 10 or 11, and all we're going to do is put them on people's doors. So raise your hand. I need 20 volunteers. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Okay. One, two. Women. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, four more. I, I volunteer my kids. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good. It would take us a long time unless I get more people. Oh, okay, here's three more. Okay. Thanks, John Reimer. Um, okay, so that's nine. So I need one more. Eleven more. Well, 11 more would be fantastic. But, uh, and so I guess I'm going to have to uh, enlist some people. How about the piano player? Can you go with us tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, talk to me after, and we'll work something out. Because I really do believe, I, I, I've believe, been believing this for 50 years. I believe in the second coming of Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our opening hymn, number 522, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. He still smiles. If you'll stand with me while we sing to God. My hope is built. do 
seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant and blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then and him be found, glad in his righteousness alone, hopeless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. You may be seated. All right, children's story is brought to us by Carl Forshea. If the children can come up here and grab their baskets and go back and collect their offering. Well, good morning. I don't think you're here. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. A little better. All right. <clears throat> well, those of you who have been here every week, I've kind of had a theme going on. <laughs> times I got, times I've almost... My life has almost ended, got real close, and I thought I'd tell just a regular mission story from the times I was living overseas, but two little ones told me I can't, I can't stop the trend now. So I was going to tell about the time I trespassed some land with some buddies and I, and uh, you know, a guy came out with a gun at her face, but Joe says to keep it short. <clears throat> so, uh, which I don't know what to say then. <laughs> Anyways, but I thought, well, maybe I'll just tell the time a short little story. 
when I was, I don't know, it's before I was starting to know my age, I guess, three or four years old, maybe. <coughs> and at that time, I lived with my parents, and we lived way out in the country, outside of Salmon, Idaho. And there's this place called Carmen, Idaho. Do you know how big Carmen, Idaho is? It's one post office box. That's it. It's one of those towns, if you blink and you miss it, and that type of thing. So we lived way up, way up in the mountains, over the hills above that. So one day, I was, my mom was driving the truck. I remember it was a red Ford truck. My dad always owns Fords. We stopped, he came, she came out from home, she stopped into the post office to get the mail. And she came out and she put me in the truck on the driver's side. And she rode around to her side. Now I must tell you, way back then, <clears throat> and this is bad, I know, but I tell you anyways, seat belts were kind of a suggestion back then. I know it's bad. So mom made sure I was in the seat and I wasn't wearing any seat belt, no child seats back then, nothing. And she closed the door. And on this door, I saw this really cool shiny thing. Came out, it was like this shiny handle, but I didn't know it was a handle. And I started playing with it. <laughs> So the mom takes out onto the highway, and you take off. I mean, highway speeds are going pretty fast, right? <clears throat> so I'm playing with it. I'm just, oh, this is cool, you know. It's nice and shiny. Little kids like shiny things, right? And the next thing I know, the door opened. And I must have been holding onto the handle, because when the door opened, the next thing I was out. And I was outside the car, and the road was coming up to me pretty fast. And boom, I hit the, the, hit the road. And I bounced a little bit, I'm sure. While well, mom put her brakes on as fast as she could, comes around there, and I was crying, because I was surprised. I wasn't expecting the road to come up that far after playing with some little shiny thing. And she comes out. And the lady at the post office comes out there running. What happened? What happened? And there I am on the, on the ground crying. And mom picks me up. And you know what she found? Nothing but a scared little boy just from bouncing on the road. So, even if, so what's the moral to the story? Besides, don't play with shiny things. <laughs> What's the moral to the story? Don't play with shiny things. <clears throat> no. Well, first of all, when you get, make sure your kids are seat buckled in and they're in their car seat so that that doesn't happen. But uh, second thing is, is God watches out for us. I think the angels were there with me because the fact that I. I just bounced around and nothing happened. Maybe a scratch or two. That itself is amazing. So that's my story today. And remember that God is always watching us. Try not to do stupid things like I do. That's why I tell you the story, so you don't do the stupid things. So you can say, man, Carl did this. I don't have to. <laughs> and look what happened to him. But remember this and go back to your seats. Thank you. Well, bef before we go, let's have our prayer. Does anybody want to pray? Nobody? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these precious children. Lord, I pray that you keep them, protect them, put your guardian angels around them. Lord, they're going to get curious just like I did, and things are going to happen. But nonetheless, you've got a big plan for them. So protect them so they can fulfill those plans. Pray this in your name. Amen.
Time for the tithes and offerings. Offering goes to the Rocky Mountain Conference Advance. All loose offerings go to the local church budget. Will the deacons please come forward? God, our Father, we praise you for all that you've given us. And I ask that we return with a joyful heart. Help us to be mindful of uh, the outreach of saving one more soul. And we praise you. May it go to bless and further your kingdom. In Jesus we pray, amen. Haley Merson will be doing our special music this morning.
thank you for that beautiful music and praise the youth. Praise them. Um, our scripture today is John 14, 6. If everyone can get there, John 14, 6. <clears throat> I'm reading for the New New King James Version. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I'd ask us to kneel when we can. Dear Heavenly Father, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. That was Psalm 18. What a blessing to be here in your sanctuary on your holy day, Lord. Thank you for the sunshine and signs of spring. May it renew our souls as well and strengthen our faith in you and your second coming. We want to give you praise, honor, and glory for being our loving Father. Lord, be with everyone here and at home and comfort those in need. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. Be with each of us as we continue our walk on this earth. Help us to spread your gospel to those we come in contact with. Thank you for loving us, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think she can give the sermon. (laughs) Let me pray one more time. Father God, this is your house. We are your sons and daughters. So I pray most earnestly for the Holy Spirit to speak through me and bless your people as we wait for the second coming. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Truth is the opposite of false. Did you get that? So I want to define false for you because this is a time in which we are living in is very precious to us as Christians. False is not truth. False doctrines are false teachings. False is made to deceive. False is inconsistent with the facts. False is deception. So we need to know what truth is so we're not deceived by our enemy, the devil. Open your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And I want to read a few verses. Because this tells us the times we're living in. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that's now, some shall depart from the faith, God have mercy, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving, and to them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. But my friends, when I read that verse many years ago, 
And I believe even today we are in the end of time. Do I hear an amen? amen. That some will leave the truth. That opened my eyes to know that what you hear from up here needs to strengthen us in our walk with God. Do I hear an amen? Now, and I told you what, what uh, false was. Now I want you to turn to John 14, 6. John 14, 6. I'm going to tell you the truth. One verse. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. My friends, it's very clear. The truth, when you find the truth, it's all about Jesus. Do I hear an amen? amen. Truth must reveal Jesus. Not what someone thinks or what someone wants to do, but what is truth. Now, you say, well, then how do I find the truth? I would say you should know that answer. But Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 you ready for this? Study. To show thyself to prove unto God a workman that neither not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. My friends, this book is filled with the truth of God. Do I hear an amen? amen. But you must take the time, my friends, to know the truth for yourselves so that you are not the deceived by the enemy. Because there are many false things being taught today. For example, when you die, you go to heaven. The greatest deception of Satan is called spiritualism. When Christ comes back the second time, I'm not going to give a study this morning, but when Christ comes back the second time, those who have died in Christ will come out of the grave at the second coming of Jesus. Do I hear an amen? amen? My friends, oh, if there was ever a time that we need to know who Jesus is, turn now to the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And I gave these verses to the students downstairs. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And then, of course, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is that referring to? Jesus is the word. Jesus is the creator God, my friends. People need to get a bigger picture and a more clearer picture of our Jesus. He, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus gave his life for you. Don't talk about everybody else. For you. You got to believe he died for, for you. And that he was the creator from the very beginning in Genesis. But my friends, everything we believe, I hope you're ready for this, everything you, you, we believe must exalt Jesus. Yes, we are a church of Bible prophecy. Turn to Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. People are afraid of this book. I don't know why. It's called part of the Bible. The last book of the Bible. Why should you be afraid of it? But they're taught that. And I've heard people tell me, oh, you can't understand it. 
I said, so I asked the question, do you know what the book of Revelation is all about? The, oh, oh, bad things, monsters and animals. I said, have mercy. I said, let me read to you one verse. Verse one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants, things must shortly come to pass. And he sent it and signified by his angel unto a servant John. The book of Revelation, my friend, is all about Jesus. The second coming is all about Jesus, my friends. We need to know what we believe when there's error out there and people are being deceived by the devil or they're choosing to be deceived. My friends, the Sabbath is all about Jesus. He was the creator. The word in in that fourth commandment is what? What? Remember. He, God knew that the human race would forget. Just like Lucifer forgot in heaven. He was a created angel. He wanted to be God. People today want to be God. They want to control us. You hear it all over the place today, even in our government. They want to control us. I think they too have forgotten that they were created. My friends, and salvation is not about how good you become or are. Salvation is all about Jesus. Did you get that? Stop trying to make yourself look good in the eyes of God so that you rate going to heaven. Who died on the cross for you? Jesus. Who forgives your sins? Jesus. Oh, my friends. And he is now, when you've accepted him as your savior, he is now your older brother. We're related to Jesus. And God is our father. Turn now to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. This verse to me is so clear. Chapter 2. When I read these two verses years ago, I got so pumped up about my God. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Did you get that message? You're saved by grace, unmerited favor. favor. And we're saved because we believe what he did for me. He died for me. He died for you. If you ask him to forgive you, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you've sinned, just get on your knees and say, God, I'm sorry. I can't, oh God, have mercy on me. He will. And say, God, please forgive me. And you're forgiven. Isn't that good news? You you should be able to live, live every day knowing You're going to heaven because you got Jesus. Everything we believe must be centered on his name. And then, of course, the sanctuary message in in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, is all about the ministry of Jesus in heaven. Did you know that? Did you know that Jesus went to heaven? Yes, we know that. The Bible tells us the disciples saw him go up. They know where he's at. He's at the right hand of God the Father. But, but we're told he had a ministry in heaven for us right now today. And it's called the sanctuary message. That's the message that God has entrusted this church with. I don't hear it coming out of other professed Christians. They don't even know what Jesus is doing. They just know he's up there. But we know what he's doing. He's preparing a people to live with him for eternity. And baptism, my friends, is all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's about you surrendering your life and you do it by going into the waters and coming out in newness of life. And if you haven't been baptized, come and see me. 
and we'll share the truths so you can say, I want to follow Jesus. And prophecy. People are afraid of Bible prophecy. In other words, the book of Revelation. Yet we just read, it's all about Jesus. Why should you be afraid of knowing the truth about Jesus and his second coming so that you're not deceived by the enemy? My friends, people are being deceived all over this world with false teachings, false doctrines, my friends. And we, as believers, have been given light to know the truth. Do I hear an amen? amen. The truth of God. You see, my friends, the Christian life is all about Jesus. It's not about you. And the challenge is to become like Jesus. If you want to be like Jesus, raise your right hand. So what's the simplicity of becoming like Jesus? 2 Corinthians 3.18. Who knows it? Who can summarize it? Thank you. That's my head out. He better have said it. <laughs> By beholding, we become changed. My friends, God is developing a holy people to take to heaven for eternity. And those who go to heaven are just like Jesus. So you see, my friends, every message we have should be exalting Jesus. No matter what you eat or drink, it's got to be about exalting Jesus, not about, look at me. No, no, no. You should be having a body that God can use to maybe go into the mission field. Maybe go to your neighbor. Oh, my friends, death is all about sleeping in Jesus. Do I hear an amen? amen. I know where, where my mommy's at. And I've asked God, God, I would like to be at my mommy's grave when Christ comes back so I can hug her for loving me knowing that my two tours in Vietnam, she prayed every day for her son. And God spared my life. And I would have never dreamed about being up here today. But God had a plan for my life. And I believe he's got a plan for every human being to help save a soul. Our mission statement, one more soul, Lord. The great controversy, and you've heard that word before? The great controversy is all about the truth of Jesus. Did you get that? It's not just sharing facts. It's revealing God, his love to keep us from being deceived before Christ comes back. Monday morning, I got a book in the mail. I live in Johnstown. Every home got a book called The Great Controversy. And I think if I hadn't have come here to this church, the Lord would have sent me somewhere else with the same passion of the truth. So this church, those of you who are visiting, I want you to know, we have mailed a great controversy to every home in Loveland, and now Johnstown, where I live at. And I gave to all my neighbors a while back. I, had, I got six, six special neighbors, and I, gave, I went to each door and knocked on it, and I said, I have to share a book with you. I gave them a desire of ages. So said, this is the most beautiful book you ever read. And I know my neighbors are all Christians, and they know I go to church on Saturday because they see me all dressed up on Saturday morning. So they know him, and they've asked him, Joe, what are you, this is a while back, I've been living there for 23 years now. 
I said, I go to church on Saturday, no comments, but, but they know I'm a Christian. And when I gave them the book, they're reading it. My friends, our love for people should shine out so that when you give them something to read or invite them to a special program, they want to come because they like you. And they know that, that you know Jesus. You see, my friends, if there is ever a time of history, ever a time that we need to be more like Jesus, it's today. You all hear an amen? amen? And we need to live like Jesus. Pray like Jesus. Another challenge for you mommies and daddies that are here. And I think a lot of you guys got kids. They might be growing up kids. You don't call them kids anymore. But do you pray for your kids every day? Every day that they'll be ready for the second coming of Christ. You see, my friends, everything we believe as Seventh-day Adventists must exalt the name of Jesus. Not just being different. It needs to exalt Jesus and who he is and what he wants to do in us and through us. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2 again. I exalt thee, there, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. I didn't know what truth was. I believed whatever I was told when I went to a church. And when I was shown the truth, I was shocked. But I was taught this is the word of God. But I wasn't allowed to have one or much less read it. And when I started reading truths, I realized I was lied to growing up. I was baptized when I was a baby. I don't remember it. I was a baby. But I was baptized. I was told that the priest forgives my sins. The Bible says I can confess my sins and I'm forgiven. I don't go to a man to ask for forgiveness. I go to God for forgiveness. I can't do all the right things. God does the right things in me, and he gets all the glory. All the glory. See, my friends, we need to be such saturated Christians with truth that we're not going to be deceived as time goes on. It's not based on how you feel. It's based on who you know. And who you know is Jesus and his truths from, from his word. Now, some of you here are visitors, and so I'm going to offer you something. I've given it to church members, and I have friends now who are giving this book away to others that they know. It's called The Fundamentals of Faith, a summary of the 28 fundamental beliefs of everything this church teaches that needs to go to the people. I got enough copies that I can give one to all of you who are visiting. And if you would go through this here, you will not be deceived by the enemy. You will know what you believe. You can mark your Bible. You can highlight scriptures and know and know the scriptures, when you know about certain subjects like the second coming of Jesus, it's not a secret rapture. 
every eye will see him. The Sabbath is not for the Jews, it's for those who believe in God, the Creator. And we read earlier, the Creator is who? Jesus. All these truths. One little pamphlet. I tell you what I did, that the Lord impressed me. I got uncles and, and cousins and nieces and nephews and grandchildren and sister and brothers. I mailed one to every one of them. And I told them why I've been to Seventh-day Adventist for 50 years. And I wanted to share this with them to know what I believe. Don't know what they're going to do. I've got several responses back. Some said, thank you. One said, Joe, I'm going to read your book because it's not very big. But I hope they look up the scriptures and see what truth is for themselves. My friends, but I really believe it's time that we as Adventists know the truth better. Do I hear an amen? amen? That when you hear certain things, it doesn't shock you because you've studied the scriptures. There's not going to be no secret rapture. Nope. God said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. It didn't say, if you love me, keep nine. It doesn't say that. And there's all the truths, my friends, that God has entrusted this church with. We need, my friends, more than ever before to have a closer walk with Jesus and his truth so God can trust us to share with somebody, a neighbor, or maybe even your own children so that they're not deceived when they get out into the world. You're going to hear some crazy stuff out there, young men. You're going to have to decide, do you want to go do that stuff, or do you want to stay close to Jesus for eternity? If there's ever a time, my friends, and I encourage you to spend this Sabbath day with your God, You'll stand with me while we sing our closing hymn, number 524, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
Benediction, I want you to make sure you don't leave this sanctuary until I give you a rose, okay? A rose from our friend there in changing people's lives. Father God, thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you, Father, that he lived the life that we can live. We're thankful, Father God, of how much love you have for us. So Father God, help us to be faithful to you to help save one more soul. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I got you. You got it? Yeah.